The Unshackled Waves, episode 206. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. It's my first time back in the studio after our Victorian election night live stream. Thank you to Dia Beltran, Logan Spaulding, Jack Dariol, Magnus O'Mellon and the XYZ crew, uh, David Hiscock and Maddie Roses for being part of the studio panel. Now there's a lot more to discuss in the aftermath of the result, the implications of which are now being felt at the federal level with Parliament back this week. Moderate Liberal MPs and the media claim the Victorian result shows the party has become too conservative and unelectable in progressive Victoria. The Morrison government is now in minority as the independent member for Wentworth, Karen Phelps, took her seat and Julia Banks quit the Liberal Party to sit on the crossbench, leaving the government with only 74 out of 150 seats. The Greens, meanwhile, to distract from their terrible result in Victoria, thanks to allegations of sexual mistreatment of women within their party, decided to make a big deal about a supposed sexual remark a National Senator Barry O'Sullivan made to Sarah Hansen Young. To catch up on all these afters and for his own interpretation on the Victorian result, I am joined by the political editor of The Unshackled, Michael Smythe. Michael, welcome back to the show. It's good to be back, Tim. Now, you're a Queenslander, so have you been one of the non-Victorians advocating that a wall be built uh, around Victoria, uh, given the election result? <laughs> uh, probably more along the lines of how long, oh Lord, is probably more my thing. I don't think a wall can stop the degeneracy that's in the the socialist enclave of Melbourne grad or Melbourne bad or whatever interesting take on the city of Melbourne you want to name. Um, building a wall would be a good start, but <laughs> yeah, I think only God could save Melbourne and this whole state of Victoria now, to be honest. I don't think you should be uh, too smug up there in Queensland. Let's not f uh, forget you have Anastasia Palaszczuk as Premier and uh, Jackie Trad as uh, Deputy Premier and uh, Treasurer. So uh, they're, they're trying to emulate uh, Victoria up there. That's true. That's true. And as bad as Palaszczuk and Trad are, they're still not as bad as Andrews yet. Hopefully it remains that way. But like I've half seriously and half jokingly said to my friends in Victoria, come back to come up to Queensland. We will give you asylum. It's not entirely a joke when I say that. OK, so let's look at the, the damage uh, as it looks at, at this time of recording. We know a bit more now than we did uh, on election night. So based on the, the ABC uh, projection. Uh, you can criticise the ABC all you like, but their uh, election modelling on the results is actually quite good. Uh, the ALP is projected to win 55 seats, the uh, Coalition 27 with three Greens and three independents. So the, the ALP has gained uh, nine seats and the, the Coalition has, has lost uh, 10. So it was pretty much a, a landslide, or as the, the, the papers have been calling it, a dance slide. And General Andrews on election night said that he was a proud progressive and proud to lead the most uh, progressive uh, state in Victoria. And the, the aftermath has been is that the, the, the commentary has been that uh, Victoria, the Liberal Party, is uh, too conservative to win in progressive Victoria. We've seen uh, Matthew Guy, the opposition leader, uh, quit. And there's also been calls for the Liberal State President, uh, Michael Kroger, uh, to resign, to take uh, his share of the blame. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time someone says, the Liberal Party's too conservative, they get no, actually, I won't say that. I'll be a little bit more polite and circumspect, at least publicly. Are you kidding me? The Liberal Party has lost by trying to be anti-conservative. The last time the Liberal Party won an election victory at the federal level, it was under a conservative leader. 
that uh, was Tony Abbott in 2013. And people say, oh, but Turnbull won in 2016. He scraped past the line. He clawed his way past the line because Bill Shorten was opposition leader. They're not gonna, it's not gonna happen the same way again. And then going back to 1997, I'm sorry, 1996 rather, John Howard, a conservative leader, won a devastating landslide against Paul Keating, who was admittedly an incompetent prime minister. But at the same time, if you think the Liberal Party is too conservative, you are stuck somewhere in the 1960s or 1970s. The Liberal Party hasn't been conservative at the latest since Howard, probably hasn't been conservative since Menzies and Gorton were prime minister, which was the 60s and the 70s. The thing is, if you want to, if you want to be, if you want to be the Liberal Party and win, you don't put up a pansy moderate leader. You put up a hard-nosed conservative who's got fight in him or her, and make sure that they can reach out to the electorate the way Menzies did in his forgotten people speeches. Well, the argument from moderates has been that in Victoria, they're the only time that uh, they've been able to, to win at a state level is under moderate leaders such as uh, Jeff Kennett, uh, Ted Bellew, and going way back, uh, Dick uh, Hammer. Yeah, Victor, well, like we're probably going to point out later on, Victoria is extremely regressive in terms of its politics. They like free stuff. They like the free give me dads. They like. But you still need stuff. Victoria to, to win federal elections. That, uh, that, uh, that uh, that's the thing. Not really. I mean, Victoria is actually losing seats in the House of number of seats in the House of Representatives. No, it's actually gaining seats. It's gaining, gaining seats. Yeah, went up from thirty seven to thirty eight seats. And that's why we have a Senate. We have an upper house to make sure a bunch of retarded socialists in Victoria don't wreck it for the rest of the country, which is why I'm absolutely staggered and appalled that the Labour Party very nearly won a supermajority, not only dominating the Assembly, but also the Legislative Council. There were two seats off. Well, we still don't how? know how the, the upper house is going to end up because... Uh, Victoria still uses group voting tickets, which allows all the micro parties to preference each other before the, the major parties. I've been following uh, Anthony Green's Legislative Council calculator. It keeps changing all the time. Labor is on uh, 17 to 19 seats out of 40. Now, they can get a working majority if they get the Greens and another uh, left-wing party such as the Animal Justice uh, Party. It still uh, remains to be seen. That, but the the other real winners from the the upper house seems to be Darren Hintz's Justice Party, the Transport Matters uh, Party, and also the the Liberal Democrats. So oh, Darren Hinch looks like his party might get around four seats, while uh, Transport Matters and Liberal Democrats uh, are looking at uh, uh, two each. So it's it's not a I, I wouldn't say it's not a completely left wing crossbench, but it's not a completely right wing uh, crossbench. Yeah, well, it only takes one or two. I mean, in fact, let's say the ABC estimate of 19 seats out of 40 is correct. You have the Greens, that's 20. All you need is one more. And it'll be some. It'll be someone from Hinch's party or possibly Sustainable Australia party because they were, sli yes, they were the slated one. to win a seat as well. Um and the Aussie Battlers Party also won a seat, if well, I recall, they, at least they, provisionally. So. Yeah, they it's they've been fluctuating in and out on the on the calculator, but yeah, if because in the previous uh, legislative council the the left wing parties uh, didn't have uh, a majority, so Daniel Andrews. Uh, couldn't get uh, more radical aspects of his agenda through, such as uh, non-binary birth certificates. You can guarantee that in his second term, emboldened by this victory, he'll want to or emulate what we've seen in uh, Tasmania with uh, that birth certificate law that was passed. Mm -hmm. And this is a point in general to note, Tim. If you want to be, if you want to be a strong, decisive leader, you don't, ex you don't 
whittle away your political capital by doing nothing. This was Tony Abbott's mistake. He didn't push through on all of his promises like he said he would. Yes, he carried some out, but not the ones that really mattered to the rank and file of the Liberal Party. So ultimately, there was no surprise that he got rolled, which is still a travesty that he got rolled. But that's part of the reason why, because he had electoral capital, political capital, and he wasted it away. If you have a resounding election victory like Abbott had in 2013 and like Andrews had in Victoria last weekend, you go for it. You make things happen. You push it through. You claim a mandate, real or perceived, and you push things through. And that's what's going to happen now. The Liberal Party absolutely failed, not by being too conservative, but by being too moderate and by being too nice. People don't want to hear, oh, Labor's so bad. You, they're not going to take care of you. We'll take care of you. Here, here, come here, come here. We'll take care of you. No, bollocks. People don't want that. People want to say, no. They want to hear the Liberal Party say, Labor fucked up. We need to get this fixed. We will fix it, but only if you back us. And this is how we're going to do it. And not pussyfoot around the issues. You've got to address the issues. Address them for God's sake. Otherwise, you're not going to win anything. And that's why they lost. They're not too conservative. They're too modern and too soft. That's their problem. That's why they lost. And yes, I hear the argument about, oh, but, you know, Victoria's the most progressive state. Yes, they're the most progressive state. But that doesn't mean they're going to suffer fools like Dan Andrews gladly as a rule. Although <laughs> the way things are going, then maybe maybe they've had a brain snap and decided to, to embrace Stockholm Syndrome. I don't know. Well, the, uh, my personal opinion is, is I think, either with a progressive liberal leader or a conservative uh, liberal leader, they were unlikely to win the Liberal Party, basically because all the, the chickens haven't come home to roost at the moment. Daniel Andrews is still able to uh, promise uh, massive infrastructure spending. Uh, he, he'd he been able to remove uh, 29 uh, level crossings so people and open up new uh, schools and hospitals so people were able to see that he's uh, doing things but of course what was revealed in the the last couple of days in the the campaign that the debt that uh, Victoria is going to have to go into to, to fund all this spending and let's not remember all the free stuff that uh, uh, Daniel Andrews offered or mainly to uh, to school children, free dental, free sanitary products, free breakfast, lunch, and then you could take stuff home uh, in the in, in the evening from school. Uh, base and there was free solar panels as well. I'm probably forgetting a whole bunch of other uh, free stuff. And yeah, the the, the Liberal Party uh, they offered was that free uh, upgrades to your your TV. That's not progressive or conservative. That's just socialist uh, in in my opinion and mm. the the liberal party they well they uh, they did have some conservative positions on on law and order they opposed the uh the safe schools program uh but uh, as i mentioned things are not that bad yet in victoria for example the the crime wave mainly uh by african gangs that's only confined to uh hot spots around the city such as Tarnit, uh, Wyndham Vale, uh, Cranbourne uh, and Officer. It, it doesn't affect the, the large majority of Melburnians yet and uh, safe schools, well just parents are just still too detached uh, uh, from what their children are learning at school. They uh, they, they trust the, the state and the, the teachers uh, too much. It's going to have to basically take uh, the uh, teachers and the, the education department to tr uh, f uh, basically implement some even more wackier shit to, to basically wake uh, parents up in that uh, that regard and this is always the case that things have to be really really bad the the uh the frog in the boiling water analogy and this is why kennett eventually won in 1992 on his third attempt because labor under joan kerner and uh, john kane had sent the state broke the state bank collapsed and victoria basically felt like a 
uh, basically a Detroit, modern day Detroit, everything was crumbling, decaying, and so the, the voters, they were anyone but Labour. Mm. It didn't take them very long to forget, though, only 22 years for them to forget just how bad Labour <laughs> Labour was in the 80s and early 90s. Voters have got short forget. memories. Voters have very short memories. Although, actually, no, that's not... Oh, actually, my point needs to be clarified and qualified here. Um, I think it was Steve Brax who came in briefly. Hmm. He was, he, he was actually yeah. a decent guy. I mean, he was a socialist, you know, dirty yeah, socialist, he, but, you know, he was a decent guy, you know. And, you know, he wasn't as... He wasn't nearly as incompetent as Andrews or Kerner. He, he was a social democrat in the uh, traditional sense, uh, more a Hawke Keating uh, economic manager. Mm -hmm. And he was old left, not this new left poison, which is emanating from the CBD of Melbourne out to the rest of the country, mm. which is what has infected Daniel Andrews and pretty much the entirety of the Labour Party down there. So I don't think that uh, Victoria is a lost cause, that it's uh, too progressive a state for conservatives to, to, to ever win. It just, like I said, things are going to get worse. We, we know with, a, with a, the, the uh, given what Daniel Andrews has been able to do to the state in just four years, imagine how much worse he's going to make it in another four years. But the, the liberal opposition uh, by 2022, they've got to basically have the, uh, the, the, the stamina, the, the tenacity to go after labor, highlight their, their, their failures. And also they actually need to have good candidates who are going to be aggressive, uh, in their, in their campaigning. And they actually need to make sure they can match labor's spending. I mean, I saw Daniel Andrews TV ads, both his positive and negative ads all the time. All I saw from the Liberal campaign was a billboard on the way to work. That's, a, that's all I saw about uh, lower energy bills and end traffic chaos. That's, that's, that's all I saw from the Liberal Party, the whole campaign. Well, exactly. Like I said, they pussyfooted around all the major issues. They said, oh, we're going to do this. Okay, good. How are you going to do it? If you don't explain how, then people are not going to be convinced. It's one thing to sound, you know, sound like you've got confidence and posture, but if you don't have an idea of how to carry it out, especially when some snarky, smart-ass journalist from the age asks you a question, then you're screwed. You're up the creek without a paddle. <laughs> you need to be able to explain how and why you are doing or you will do what you are planning in terms of fixing the state. And then this also goes for the federal party as well, for the federal elections as well. You know, explain what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and why you're going to do it. It's that simple. Now, moderate Victorian Liberal MPs, they, they took uh, their, their message from the Victorian election to Canberra. There was a uh, uh, Cabinet Minister Kelly O'Dwyer reported to have told Scott Morrison that the Liberal Party is viewed as anti-women, homophobic and climate change deniers. Uh, Tim Wilson said on, on TV, now this is the guy that used to work for the Institute of Public Affairs, a climate skeptic group, said that oh, we need to uh, yeah, get rid of this mindset that the, the public hate renewables and, and love coal. And the Senate President, uh, Scott Ryan, also a Victorian, uh, he he said that oh you know we 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 don't need to have a conservative uh, test in the uh, the uh, the Liberal Party or oh, we shouldn't be excluding people from the, uh, the the broad church and then we had the the news poll out Sunday night which showed the Morrison government forty five fifty five behind parliament was back this week uh karen phelps took her seat as and the new independent member for wentworth and then we uh saw julia banks uh quit uh the the liberal party she'd already yeah, good uh, 
<laughs> she'd already announced that she wasn't uh, recontesting her Victorian marginal seat of Chisholm, but uh, she quit saying that uh, uh, the party had been taken over by the reactionary right and uh, said that God, uh, Mal I wish. Malcolm Turnbull... I'm Term sorry to interrupt, Tim, but I freaking wish the reactionaries would take over the Liberal Party because the Liberal Party has gone so far to the left, it is now just a rich man's Labor Party. Actually, it's been a rich man's Labor Party for a while, but the, <laughs> the past but wait, three years it get, have just been proof of that. It gets better. Uh, she described Malcolm Turnbull and Julie Bishop as uh, visionary and inspiring <laughs> leaders. <laughs> yeah, and... Oh, Julie Bishop, she was uh, back dying, in the news yeah. this week saying that uh, the uh, the coalition, they should do a, a deal with Labor to implement the, the Paris Accord. And now Julie Bishop, she's announced that she's staying in Parliament uh, uh, over the next election. She appears to be taking on the, the job of how moderates viewed Tony Abbott on the backbench, which is seems to be her job now is to do the, the sniping on behalf of the moderates to uh, say all these moderate things from the backbench and basically be a pain in the, the, the conservative side for however long uh, that will be. Well, Julie needs to stop bitching and backbiting and backstabbing. That's what she needs to do. It's unbecoming of her. She knows better and she should do better. And as for Julia Banks, I'm, for those of you who actually have me on Facebook, you'll see my rather blunt assessment of um, Banks' gaslighting the other day. I didn't exactly pull any punches with it. And it's just, okay, oh, the Liberal Party's too conservative. God almighty, I wish they were. Like I said that before, I wish the Liberal Party were conservative again, or at least half conservative and half liberal like they were under Howard. Howard had the ability to bring the liberal and conservative wings of the party together and make them agree to something. Make them to agree to a lot, actually. And oh. he just kept on winning. The John, um, the Liberal Party needs at the least another John Howard, but will be the only thing that will save the Liberal Party will be having another Menzies. Well, let's... Uh... Since the Victorian result, let's have a look at what the, the Liberal Party has done. They've had the New South Wales Senate pre-selections where uh, Jim Molan was bumped to the fourth position on the Coalition Senate ticket, the unwinnable one. And in the number one and number two spots are moderates Holly Hughes and Andrew Bragg. So basically the, the moderates have had a clean sweep of the Senate positions and now there's a renewed push to... Uh, remove uh, Craig Kelly, the, the member for, for Hughes, a uh, conservative in the in the Liberal Party from his uh, uh, pre-selection. Yeah, well, what was it that Christopher Pine said last year? We are in the winner's circle and we're going to keep on winning. You know, the moderates are not content. These crypto leftists in the Liberal Party who consider themselves Oh, we're moderates. We're not. We're not reactionary like those conservatives, and we're not dirty socialists like those social democrats in the Labour Party. Oh no! Please, they're a bunch of hypocritical degenerates. The moderates are the kinds of people who, if you give them an inch, they will take a mile, and that is what they have done. Howard gave them an inch by supporting Turnbull's nomination for Wentworth in 2004 against a sitting member. And now that inch that Howard gave them has now been taken a mile, several times over by Turnbull and by other filthy moderates, including O'Dwyer and Bishop, who both frankly should shut the fuck up as far as I'm concerned. They're not helping the party. They're punching right. They're not helping themselves either. And all they're doing is making it easier for the Labour Party to get into power. Do they want the Labour Party to get into power? I hope they don't. But it, the way they're acting, it looks like they are. So they seriously need to take a good look at themselves. Well, it's all out of revenge because they believe that uh, conservatives in the Liberal Party and uh, uh, the uh, the columnists in the Murdoch press, the, the Sky After Dark, the, the 2GB people, they brought down Malcolm Turnbull for, for no reason other, other than uh, he wasn't a conservative. And so this is their revenge. Like, you, you destroyed our prime minister, 
Morrison's not even the Conservatives' Prime Minister. Uh, Turnbull managed to uh, manoeuvre things so that Morrison would beat Dutton, but the moderate strategy is now, we're going to do what you did to us, and we're going to burn everything to the fucking ground. It's scorched earth. It's a scorched earth policy. It's nihilism. It's political nihilism at its best and worst. I mean, the, the thing is, they're hypocrites for doing so because all of them were white anting Abbott from the first day he was elected. He was appointed as prime minister. They were doing it from day one, and now they have the high to bitch and cry and moan that you know the Murdoch press, ooh, evil Murdoch press did it to them. Come on, the Murdoch press isn't even conservative, for God's sake. They're a bunch of contrarians who love sticking it to the man, whoever the man may be. They don't have an agenda or an ideology. They just want to make money. They don't give a damn about your politics. They're just going to follow a story or make up a story as they see fit. Or make something out of a story as they see fit, I should probably say more correctly. Point is... They're hypocrites for complaining about having done to them what they did to Abbott and the Conservatives in the first place. And the Conservatives, you know, I mean, if, if Tony Abbott was going to white Ant Turnbull, he did a pretty shitty job at it because <laughs> Turnbull survived for years. It was only because Peter Dutton, who, yes, he wanted to be Prime Minister, he wants to be Prime Minister, but he wasn't prepared to go against his leader until people kept on whispering in his ear and saying, do it, 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 please do it, please do it. Yeah, okay. From that, you can say, oh, Sky News after dark and Murdoch Press was saying it. Unfortunately, that argument falls flat when you consider the fact that most of the people that were being echoed, <clears throat> pardon me, sorry, that were being echoed by... Hadley, for example, and others, they were just reflecting what their listeners were saying and writing in to media outlets. It's not like it was part of a grand plan. I mean, if you say that, oh, the Murdoch press is responsible for Turnbull's ouster, you sound like a retarded friggin' lunatic greenie. You should be put in a padded cell, mate. Honestly, get some <laughs> mental help. <laughs> now, <laughs> there was no conspiracy. There was no conspiracy to take down Turnbull. If there had been, I would have rejoined the Liberal Party. Now, the implication of this new uh, factional war that's emerged in the Liberal Party is that Scott Morrison as Prime Minister has no authority, and now he has no majority on the House on the floor of the House of Representatives. And uh, basically, this week, the, the, the government has... Uh, had to cope with uh, Labor bringing on uh, their uh, push to set up a f uh, federal integrity uh, commission, basically to be a federal version of uh, ICAC, the, the New South Wales anti-corruption uh, body. And then there's also the, the push to have uh, Peter Dutton refer to the High Court over that uh, he owns childcare centres in a family trust which receive uh, government uh, subsidy. And... It's it's made me this week this week in in politics where Morrison government's lost control of the agenda. It makes Julia Gillard managing a hung parliament look like she was really competent. I wouldn't go quite that far, but I certainly see your point. Listen, the thing to remember about the defection of the perfidious Julia Banks is that. She's still guaranteed confidence and supply. I mean, the ScoMo government is no more shaky than the Turnbull government has been ever since it took power from Abbott by a sneak attack in 2015. There's still going to be confidence unless, unless another MP decides to resign from either the Liberal or the National parties and then decides to say, no, we will not guarantee confidence or supply. So buggy you. We're still going to have an election in March or May. Probably May. Most of the pundits are saying May. I'm personally hoping March, but I'm expecting May as well. 
It doesn't help that Scott Morrison's performance as Prime Minister has been poor. I mean, he has absolutely no policies. He might move the, the embassy uh, in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Uh, he may slash immigration in the, the, the budget next year. I don't know what their climate policy is now that the uh, National Energy Guarantee is dead. He, uh, uh, all he's doing is just that tour where he goes around the, the country on that. No, he, he doesn't go in the bus. He flies and then when he gets off the plane, he goes on the bus, drives uh, ten, 10 kilometres. I mean, it's it's a joke. No, it's all show business, isn't it? I but mean, there's no substance. I mean, well, he, well, he's... No, no. Not, there, he, well, of course there's no substance. It's, pol it's modern day politics, Tim. Contemporary politics is but, meaningless in terms of But it's allow it allows Shorten to, to say that I've got policies. Yes, they're bad policies in terms of the, uh, the, the changes to capital gains uh, tax and uh, reversing uh, the... Uh, the tax cuts, uh, but they're, they're, they're policies that, that Shorten can point to, which uh, Morrison doesn't have. Another thing as true, that's correct, Tim, and another thing that should be noted here is that ScoMo's performance has been spray and pray, so to speak. He's come out strongly in some areas and won some brownie points from the rank and file. But he hasn't consolidated that. I mean, he still wants to. I mean, he still wants to sign the Paris Climate Accord. At least that's the most recent thing I've heard. I mean, it's still a matter of will he, won't he, will he, won't he. But he still wants to sign that. The only things he has done right is say, well, we're not going to sign this migration compact, and he has come out and criticised. Um, the set the um role of radical islam or wahhabism in radicalizing the burke street the most recent burke street attacker you know so that's he's had some brownie yeah. points but yeah. he hasn't that's hardly revolutionary in this day and age to talk tough on islam for me it's action that speaks louder than words like oh you exactly. just discovered the problem he hasn't now done any action it's just yeah. empty words yeah that's correct him he's just empty words and Look, I like Scott Morrison, but the words are just empty unless they're followed through with action. I mean, I could say I'm going to end homelessness in Australia in 10 years like Bob Hawke did. But unless I have a plan to do it and actually do it, it's not going to mean anything. It's just going to be another broken promise. So basically to sum up this mess that uh, the Victorian result has now gravitated and blown up the, the Liberal Party in Canberra. I've, I, I'm calling it now. Labor's going to win the next election in a landslide. Like, I don't think, like, there's going to be a budget surplus next year. That's what Morrison is trying to be and promote this week. The public have just switched off. They, they just see the Liberal Party as a rabble, and you can tell by what I've just said that I'm just despairing, that I, I just don't see a way out of this. And the only way I think is for the for the liberal factions to basically tear, uh, tear each other apart, and then hopefully when there's nothing left, some actual constructive rebuilding can begin. I feel much the same as you, Tim. I really do. I hope to God that Labor's win next year, which I agree Labor will win next year. I mean, no one could save the Liberal Party from defeat now. Um, the only thing I don't agree with you on is that it'll be a landslide. That's the only thing I don't agree with you on. But then I could be wrong as well. So, you know, anything's possible. I do think Labor will win. I just hope and pray it's not a landslide because if it is a landslide and it translates to the senate then we are really screwed now there was some uh good news to come out of the uh, victorian election is that uh, the greens uh, got a terrible uh, result they've at the <laughs> moment gone from five upper house uh, mps uh, down to one. Uh, now they are projected to win three in the lower house, but uh, they're they're only assured of one 
at the moment. They're, uh, they're still marginal, the seat of Brunswick and Pran, and they lost uh, Northcote. Uh, now, this was due to the fact that uh, the Greens, uh, during the uh, state election campaign, uh, a lot of uh, stories came out of uh, the Greens uh, mishandling uh, allegations of sexual misconduct against women within the party. Now, this stemmed from an August uh, 7.30 uh, report uh, segment, which talked about uh, complaints being with mishandled within the the New South Wales uh, Greens. We, d we discussed this last week. There was uh, the candidate for uh, Footscray. He had rapped about uh, date rape and the uh, candidate for Sandringham was actually disendorsed because he'd been uh, accused of actual rape. Now, the Greens obviously needed to do uh, something this week to claim that they were the party for women and for uh, feminism. Now, Nationals uh, Senator uh, Barry O'Sullivan, um, well, he's lost his pre-selection um, uh, for the, the next election, so he's deciding to go out with a, with a bang. He decided to declare himself, self-identify as a woman uh, a, f uh, a few weeks back, uh, so he couldn't be accused of being sexist for being uh, pro-life. And now, in the Senate, he was criticising the Greens for calling Senate inquiries and then not turning up to them. He said that uh, this is what Nick Xenophon used to do, and he singled out Sarah Hanson Young for doing this, and said that uh, she had a bit of Nick Xenophon in her, which um, was interpreted as a, a double entendre. Which... Even though, even though, hang on, Tim, even though he said, I am not meaning this in a filthy way or in a sexual way. <laughs> it was, it was it's still... a perfectly legitimate comment. It's a perfectly yeah, yes. legitimate comment to make, and she has no right to get all upset about it. I mean, if you want if you want, if you want people to take you seriously, don't yell out, slut shaming! At the first mention, oh, you've got a little bit of such and such in you, doesn't make you the such. I mean, you know, but hey, if the shoe fits, wear it, I suppose. <laughs> well, well, this whole, um, like, the reason that Sarah Hanson Young pounced on this is because she claims that she was slut shamed by uh, David Linehelm back in, in June. This stemmed from when David Linehelm claimed that Sarah Hanson Young said in the Senate, um, uh, all men are rapists, and then David Linehelm went on Outsiders and said that uh, Sarah Hanson Young had had uh, boyfriends and the rumours about her were well known, and Sarah Hanson Young said that she'd been uh, slut-shamed uh, by this, and now there's a pending legal action by Sarah Hanson Young against David Linehelm, which actually is about attack of character for his assertion that... Um, uh, she said all men are, are rapists. It's not over the, the slut-shaming uh, remarks because David Lineham repeated, claimed that Sarah Hanson Young said this uh, outside of the parliament, which is not covered uh, by parliamentary privilege. But getting back to uh, Sarah Hanson Young's outrage at this, well, uh, Richard Di Natale, the leader of the Greens, well, he, he decided that he would uh, grandstand on this. He called Barry O'Sullivan a pig, and because he refused to uh, withdraw that, or is that a sexual uh, comment as well, that he, he didn't want to withdraw? Um, and so he was uh, suspended uh, from the Senate uh, for a day. And then uh, Sarah Hanson Young, she... Uh, d decided to make her uh, speech where she she said, I'll, I'll name a you who hurl sexist uh, abuse and slurs every day. And she named Senator O'Sullivan, Linehelm, uh, Bernardi, and Anning. And uh, she said that you are not fit to be in this chamber. Uh, you're not fit to call yourselves men, implying that oh, real men don't do this. Well, she means uh, what? modern men or what the male feminists <clears throat> she should really take the log out of her own eye before trying to remove the speck in others the specks in other people's eyes i mean okay yeah uh, look I, i'm quite fond of barry um <clears throat> sorry senator o'sullivan i'm actually i actually quite like him i i quite like anning as well as well as you know but um, well you probably like all four of those people on that list Actually, uh, I'm neutral on Lionhelm. I don't like Bernardi. I'll 
explain why later. But um, I just think Bernardi's too weak and soft, to be honest, and too arrogant for his own good. But that's – anyway, that's besides the point. Look – Barry is one of those people who gives it to you straight. He doesn't bullshit. He's not going to beat around the bush. He's not going to sugarcoat anything. If, if he thinks you fucked up, he's going to tell you outright, you fucked up. Um, it, it's, it's really that simple. You know, I mean, you know, he was completely justified in calling out Sarah Hansen Young for, you know, calling for inquiries and then not showing up. It's like, this is a bit of, you've got a bit of Xenophon in you. I mean, it could also be taken as a reference to the fact that she's from South Australia. Yeah, yeah, there's that as well. I mean, for God's sake, if you look for offence, you'll find it everywhere. I mean, God, I could get offended so easily if I chose to. You know, there's so many things that people can say about, you know, so, so many innocuous things that can be said. And it could be taken as offence if you're a snowflake. Like, stop being a freaking snowflake. Now, the uh, Spectator website, they really uh, got the, the feminist uh, sisterhood into uh, even greater uh, hysteria online because they published their, their in their flat white mailbag, which is their online thing, they published uh, a piece which said Sarah Hansen Young's credibility gap because when she delivered that spray to the conservative men, she was wearing a top that revealed her cleavage and the spectator went with a photo zoomed in of her cleavage and the, uh, I'm, pa I'm paraphrasing the, the, the letter, it said like, how can you make uh, such a, uh, a statement when you've got your boobs uh, hanging out like that? Now the spectator has taken... Uh, was that Brendan uh, O'Neill who put that byline there? No, I, it was it was a letter written to uh, the spectator online. Now, <laughs> <laughs> it's now that, that's sort of like you can imagine just like the the feminist bleh, raging <laughs> I, 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 I over that, and it's just it, it, it's basically now I think Sarah Hansen Young and the rest of the Greens have forgotten that uh hope hope that everyone's forgotten that uh, the the party still has its own problem uh with women oh yeah they have a massive problem with women well the women that are working through the ranks and there was something that has to be there was something that somebody said to me the other day about male feminists they're the most likely to be predatory yeah yeah exa exactly because well, basically, the theory they think is that they're entitled to it yeah. because they've been white knighting, and they think they're entitled to it. And <laughs> they think that saying that you're a male feminist—that's the way to impress women these days. And so you can sort of lure a woman into a false sense of security, and then pounce, seduce her sexually. Eh, well, that's not the way, soy boys. That is definitely not the way. Mm. <laughs> Although I doubt any soy boys actually listen to the show, so it's a moot point, isn't it? Well, we've got plenty of trolls on the on the live stream. I assume many of them would be soy boys. Yeah, a few of them would be soy boys, most likely. Mm. Or misandrist women who have mm. nothing better to do with their time because they're at home alone with their broods of cats. Oh. But anyway, nice try, Greens, of trying to create this uh, smoke screen uh, this week you're not the party of of women and and that was exposed in the victorian state election where a lot of progressive uh women and uh men decided not to vote for you indeed so but to be fair when labor is as far left as it is in victoria who needs the greens yeah, you had to admire the, the Labour Party on being able to beat the parties on both its left and, and right flank. You have to give them credit for basically bashing their, their opponents so effectively. Oh, absolutely. Well, there's a lot to be said for thuggery, isn't there? Hmm. Uh, nice guys a lot of the time in politics finish last. Mm, quite so. Well, there's uh, one more uh, sitting week uh, before the, the end of the year. We'll see if the Morrison government can <laughs> get some sort of facade of a competent 
government uh, in that time, but uh, we'll be back to uh, wrap that up uh, next week, uh, Michael. Um, uh, FYI, I'm staying here in Victoria. I'm I'm not leaving, so uh, it's too important to, to leave. So uh, wish me luck. I will pray for you, brother. <laughs> Have a good night. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. I would just like to remind everyone again that the Free Speech Rally Against Antifa Violence that was scheduled to take place this Saturday in Melbourne has been cancelled. Magnus O'Malley from the Australian Freedom of Speech Movement explained his reason on the live stream. It is unfortunate as in Victoria post-election we now need to take a stand up for free speech more than ever. The Deplorables tour featuring Gavin McGuinness and Tommy Robinson has been moved to February. This is the fourth uh, date change in the tour, which I know has frustrated a lot of ticket holders, but there is still a big effort being made to by the left to block Tommy and Gavin coming to Australia. So if the tour is worth doing, that it is worth making sure everything goes to plan, even if it is delayed. Tickets from the tour are still on sale at the deplorables.com.au. Tickets are also on sale for Jordan B. Peterson's return to Australia in February next year with special guest Dave Rubin of The Rubin Report. He'll be visiting all the major cities, including Canberra, as well as Auckland and Christchurch in New Zealand. They did sell out quick last time, so make sure you go to jordanbpeterson.com slash events to grab a seat if there are some by the time this podcast is released. Our online store, Upright Market, is doing a roaring trade with our new range, such as our It's Not Okay To Be Green shirt. Make sure you check it out by going to uprightmarket.com. Remember, we are only able to keep our regular production schedule up with your support, and the best form of support is, of course, becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash theunshackled. Or there is the option to send us a direct one-off contribution via our PayPal link at paypal.me slash theunshackled. So thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.